Can you guys hear that? There is a light summer sprinkle happening right now. It's probably not gonna come through on the microphone, but you know, I did test uh, the roof uh, waterproofing with the garden hose. So I sprayed a bunch of water up there, but uh, there's nothing like a for real bona fide like thunderstorm just with a lot of rain to truly test the waterproofing. And I wish, I hope that I will get a good rainstorm uh, on top of this before it goes to paint, just so that I can test that waterproofing. Um, there's nothing like a real prolonged rainstorm to really test. So cross your fingers, hopefully that will happen. It's not likely. Here in the Pacific Northwest, we don't get uh, good summer uh, thunderstorms. That's a Midwest phenomenon. All of our rain happens all winter long. We get beautiful, sunny, dry, dry summers. So anyway, last week we were uh, working more with aesthetics than with waterproofing. And, uh, you know, it occurred to me, looking at the motorhome without that AC unit, just how much the clutter on the roof um, dates the motorhome. Kind of, it, it makes it look like 1978. The shape of the motorhome overall is pretty timeless. It's really quite elegant. And I think that um, continuing to make the exterior more sleek um, is the way to go. It's gonna make it a much better looking motorhome. So to that end, um, we're gonna be doing a few things, taking off stuff. And um, also I want to look at the lighting here at the front. Those uh, clearance lights up on top, the original lights are kind of big. Now, you might've seen in a prior episode where I remade the stock lenses, but those have to be that size because you need the air gap so that they don't burn up with the heat coming off of the um, incandescent bulb. But you know, nowadays we have LED lighting, so the, I don't see any reason why we can't put a more low profile solution up there to continue to make the motorhome look even more sleek. So yeah, we're gonna do that and some other work back there and yeah, let's get into it. That is the rooftop tent on my Lexus LX470, technically a Land Cruiser 100. I'm really happy with this vehicle and we've gone camping quite a few times. We're gonna go camping next week in it as well. And having that camping setup is the reason it's taken me so long to complete the motorhome because I'm less motivated because we're getting out there and camping already. But this is gonna be, you know, like glamping and that's kind of roughing it, even though it's it's pretty nice. But it's basically like having, uh, I don't know, like a Westfalia pop-up camper on your Volkswagen or something like that. Anyway, there's a ladder That is what the tent looks like fully deployed. And I made a couple of videos uh, about building up that, um, that whole rig there. So go ahead and check the description if you wanna watch those. But anyway, in this bag is the ladder that you're meant to access that rooftop tent using. Not bad, huh? So let's jump online and see if we can get one of these ladders uh, for permanent storage and permanent use with the motorhome. And here on eBay, I found one, obviously a made in China special, but it's uh, got US inventory, Hacienda Heights, California. So that should get here pretty quickly. And also this is 12 and a half feet. So that's, um, I think the one that I have is like maybe nine feet tall. So this will be uh, good. I'll be able to reach even if the motorhome's up on blocks or something like that. So. I'm gonna buy this for $65. The telescopic ladder will definitely work, which means that I can uninstall this permanent ladder uh, and the railings on the roof that go along with it. I just, I don't like it. It looks cluttered. Uh, I'm sure it was the bee's knees back in 1978 and um, it was pretty cool back then, but I think a telescoping ladder is a, is a better solution today. Feels a little more dangerous up here now. Good 
I think this ladder is made out of aluminum. Well, that looks sleek, doesn't it? It just looks so aerodynamic with, uh, without anything up on top, without an AC unit or anything like that. And it's causing me to um, doubt the roof lights up there, the marker lights. Those original lights are not nearly low profile enough to maintain that sleek appearance. In fact, you can see that middle one is the only one with the uh, actual receiver plate installed. So it sits up another quarter inch. The rest of them are just the lenses sort of sitting in place. So I definitely want a solution that is, yeah, more low profile. And this is the solution that I'm looking for. You can see just how much smaller it is. Now, uh, I want this to be as low profile as possible. So that means that I need to mount this light flat to the roof. And thankfully it's wide enough to cover the hole. So I should be able to use the light itself as the, uh, as the waterproofing agent uh, and keep the uh, rain out of the coach. But there's these two holes here, which I need to patch. So I need to pull the metal out here and then use that body filler uh, to, to just close those holes off. Now, the thought occurred to me to mount the light like so, but then it's not much more low profile than the original stock solution. And um, these two LED bulbs in here are plenty bright so that even um, kind of sideways, like I tried, it, I tried looking at it uh, at night sideways like this, and even that light, even though most of the light is going straight up towards the sky, even the light coming forward is brighter than the stock incandescent bulbs. You see what I'm talking about? And this left one here, the cover is practically clear. I mean, you can pretty much see the light bulb in there. It's hardly adding any color to the light. So this one on the right is more colorful and it's brighter, even at this angle. And that's not even mentioning the heat here. Like I can feel the heat coming off this bulb. So that is a very inefficient bulb going to be burning through batteries or whatever it is. So much better to go with the uh, this more svelte LED solution. This will, you know, be legal. It's plenty bright to be legal. And um, I don't even know what these stupid roof marker lights do anyway. I don't know why they're mandated by law. They seem kind of silly to me. But uh, yeah, anyway, they're still going to be there. It's still going to be legal and it's going to be lower profile. So let's pop these uh, riv nuts out of there and patch that up. Oh yeah, I'm going to be using these um, basically sheet metal screws into the SMC uh, fiberglass. Um, you know, that's, it's going to hold it down just fine. I don't, I don't need to replace the riv nuts. They sit proud, you see, so they make it even less low profile. So here on the inside, we can see those rib nut type fasteners for the uh, for the running lights up on top of the roof. And they're just these tri-wing sort of bent things. So if I take a pair of pliers here and just sort of squeeze the, the wings back in, I can just pop them out. It's a bit more difficult here uh, where I have to dig through the foam. That's even easier than that. Just thread these in from the outside like so. Give it a couple of whacks with the hammer. And it should pull right out. There we go. Job's a good one. There's this other problem up here. You can see it's real dirty, but also it's kind of delaminating pretty badly. Um, between the cab, or the roof cap, and the sort of frame. Now all of this is a uh, sheet molded compound. It's two parts sheet molded compound that are joined together. So I'm basically gonna have to sand this top surface and kind of, I'll put a thin application of body filler across it just to, I don't know, smooth it out. But then the hard part's gonna be digging this out up in here and replacing it with some sort of new glue to, uh, to rebond that. What are you going to work on a roof for? Well, because it leaks water. Okay, so I'm up here, and I've got this piece of sandpaper wrapped around my putty knife, and that's allowing me to kind of sand to prepare the joint up here, and I'm going to fill it now with that seam sealer. All right, so you can see I've got this seam sealer uh, drying right here, and there's these flathead screws which are cinching up the gap, closing the gap there, and I'll probably end up putting some uh, body filler over these screws at some point. Uh, I've sanded down below the paint here, so I'll just build up a thin film of body filler which should completely obscure those screw heads and everything will look yeah, stock basically. It'll look nice and smooth. But finishing this is just one of those little odds and ends that has to get put off until later. 
One last thing before we go, let's talk about the planned paint job that I have. This is both performative and it looks good. I've never seen in all of the photos, you know, this this cult following on these motorhomes and all the paint jobs out there, I've never seen a fade like this. And I think it looks just really classy. I like it. Um, and it's uh, going to be quite cool in the sun, which is also very important because, you know, you can roast in these motorhomes. But when the roof is all white and when you got white almost all the way down and the dark color starts below the belly band, which is where the motorhome starts to curve underneath, you're not going to get a whole lot of radiant you know, heat from the sun hitting the motorhome down low here. So this should stay pretty cool um, while still looking good and having that that darker color underneath. Also, uh, if dirt gets kicked up from the tires and the motorhome starts to get dirty underneath, um, you know, from going down a dirt road or something like that, it's going to blend right into the paint job. You'll hardly even notice it. So I'll need to clean the thing less often as well. So yeah, you can see, I just did this Photoshop on an all white uh, motorhome. I found a picture of an all white motorhome on Craigslist. And this is what I've got in mind. If anybody's got a better idea, I would love to hear it. Go ahead and chime in in the comments down there. Well, that'll do it for this week. This is the link to the playlist with all of the videos about this GMC motorhome. So if you liked this video, chances are you're going to like every other video in that list. And right here, I might put some other link, but there's always good information included in the description as well. So thank you for watching. See you next time.